good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Weather Center in Azaria. It is October 18th, 2023. We're officially halfway through another week here in the midst of the month of October, guys, and I can't believe we are already past the halfway mark to Halloween. Due to the illness and the bit of the head cold that I have still going on to this day, we're going to make this video incredibly short, guys. I have a number of very important updates that I want to communicate to you all, and we're not going to skip over those, but for the sake of time and for the live stream later tonight at 8 p.m., I'm going to go ahead and be very brief, and I would really encourage you tune in for our 8 p.m. Tropics Talk because tonight we're going to go island by island and talk about what the future impacts look like for Invest 94, soon to be Tropical Storm Tammy here within the next potentially 8 to 12 hours, as well as when the timing of the most worst conditions are likely to be settling in for your area there in the Leeward and Windward Islands. We're immediately jump-starting things on National Hurricane Center's homepage, and here is 94L. This has been the talk of the tropics for what seems like forever now. It was the same situation with Tropical Storm Philippe, and it looks like, once again, we have 94L on all of our radars. We are now back in business in terms of high probabilities. We'll see some formation here, not only in the next 48 hours, but within the next seven days as well, with a 90-90 split for both in terms of what National Hurricane Center is forecasting this afternoon as of 2 p.m. We have seen some very, very weird changes now with our track guidance in terms of what our other operational models are predicting. If you've been tuning in for the last few segments of Weather Center Nazaria, we've mentioned how the European ensembles in particular were showing a sudden westward jog with this system once it does make it into the Eastern Caribbean. We're going to go and take a look at that here momentarily, but I also want to remind everybody that within the next 24 to 36 hours, we will start to see conditions go downhill regardless of what this system looks like as we go throughout the day tomorrow and especially Friday morning. Most of our models are on board that that is when conditions are going to start to rapidly go downhill. They will deteriorate for most of your area out there for the Lesser Antilles and potentially the British U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico as well. We're going to examine that later tonight at 8 p.m. during our Tropics Talk. So again, it would behoove you to tune on in, bring all the questions you have, any of the concerns you have. I'm happy to help you out. So as I would mentioned, this is our current model track guidance, and you can see that a decent majority are still anticipating that it is going to track off to the west-northwest and eventually get pulled out to sea well east of our Bermuda island thanks to that very potent nor'easter that's getting ready to take shape along the eastern coast of the U.S. What I do want to mention, and it doesn't seem too favorable right now, but I do find it very interesting that we are now starting to see at least four to five different of our deterministic tracks here taking it through the Lesser Antilles and into the eastern Caribbean before potentially moving into the eastern Bahama Islands as well. So we'll definitely have to keep an eye on that. A lot of our intensity guidance, for that matter, suggests that we will see at least a tropical storm out of this, and if it does continue to further consolidate and deepen down, it will be more than likely picked up by that frontal system, that nor'easter winter storm that is expected to hit the northeast and the eastern segments of Canada for that matter before completely roping out towards the upper polar regions near Greenland. Now we've been talking about this for at least two days now. We highlighted it during our Monday night tropics talk. I did a full segment on it yesterday and today we have a little bit more concrete evidence to put a foothold on. Right now we're looking at our 12 Zulu European model. On the left hand side we have our 500 millibar geopotential height and on the right hand side we have our mean sea level pressure and precipitation model. The reason I have both of these up is we have a very interesting interaction between air masses that are going to occur somewhere either in the central to western Atlantic or potentially along the northern periphery of the Caribbean Sea where our most hottest ocean heat content and sea surface temps still are for this time of year as well as with that modified polar air coming off of the east and the southeastern coastline after our nor'easter can pull it all the way down out of Canada. I'd like you to start off looking at that left hand side side chart. Okay, let's look at the 500 millibar geopotential heights. If you watched my video yesterday, I mentioned a bubble of cold air. If you watch as we track through time, there goes our 500 millibar low representative of our tropical storm eventually forming up within the next 12 to 24 hours maximum. Very small blip in comparison to that trough that's supporting our nor'easter. You can see it digging in across the southeast, even into the portions of the Bahamas and Cuba, the Cayman Islands as well, could see a little bit of interaction with that feature as it scrapes through the eastern half of Conus and then begins to evacuate way very quickly. As we get that zonal pattern, I know we're looking down over the Caribbean right now, but as we get that zonal pattern, if you watch closely what those contours do, take a look at that all of a sudden gray blob that sinks down over the Bahamas and right along the border of the Atlantic and the Caribbean as well over the greater Antilles of Dominican Republic, Hispaniola, and Cuba. If you look at the right hand side now, take a look at how we start to see that surface reflection build up and we start to see some lowering pressure over a large span of area across most of the DR, Hispaniola, even the portions of the Cuban island, the Bahamas, we have just a very expansive storm system that starts to build towards the 
26th and the 27th of October and becomes a full-fledged upper-level feature with a surface low-pressure reflection of it at about the 28th of October time frame. I've been tracking this for the last few days now, and it looks like the European model is still on board that we'll see some sort of an upper-level feature entrenched under that broad amplitude ridge. It's a little hard to pick out on this left-hand chart, but if I were to draw the line for you, that's exactly where that ridge would be. You can kind of see the contour shading on the right-hand side and the contour shading on the left-hand side, indicative of that long-wave ridge that's pretty much across much of the central western Atlantic and the eastern portions of the United States. With that upper low, that bubble of cold air or that dome of cold air, if you will, that breakaway energy from the jet stream at 300 millibars, it only has one direction to go, and that's to the west. Because this feature is entrenched underneath that broad amplitude ridge, we're really not going to see a whole lot of stimulus or a whole lot of larger scale weather features to interact with it, just like we typically see with our tropical cyclones out there across the Atlantic. That ridge is going to act like a protective blister, if you will. If you look at it on that 500 millibar geopotential height chart, you can see it ridging around that dome of cold air. And the reason we have those gray blobs, those lines that indicate 588, 582, and a little bit lower than that as we get over the Cuban island, that shows you that our atmospheric heights are dropping. And that's a clear indication that we have colder air, it's more dense. Think of it like rubber in heat, it expands. In cold, it tends to shrink like plastics or rubber wood on your vehicles. Same concept here with our geopotential height charts. It shows greater heights in the atmosphere where your warmer air, lower pressure is. And then we have our lower heights where a lot of the colder air, that sinking air, is indicative of cooler polar air from up north. And because we have that dome of warm air around it, i.e. that broad amplitude ridge, we're not going to see anything else interact with it to try to kick it out or move it away from its westward track that it's currently on, indicated by the euro. So once again, this is still on my radar. We're going to continue to investigate exactly what could possibly come out of this. We've been seeing this across the board on all of our model platforms, and the euro has been the most insistent that that breakaway bubble of cold air from the jet stream aloft is going to sink as far down as the tropical region. It won't linger in the mid-latitudes, according to the euro anyways. The GFS has been back and forth. The Canadian model also indicates it'll sink down into the tropical regions as opposed to stay in the mid-latitudes, and that could play a huge role in exactly how this modifies and what it transforms into once it can get down there and potentially interact with a few of our lingering tropical waves still propagating west through some of the entropical environment. So again, guys, as we close out this video, I know this was probably the fastest I've ever done. This is probably only going to be about maybe eight to 10 minutes maximum. I have so many specific details that I want to get into, and I know I typically spend over an hour in our live tropics talks Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and tonight at 8 p.m. We're definitely going to delve very into the nitty gritty what our Lesser Antilles could be looking at over the next 24 to 48 hours as Invest 94 Future Tropical Storm Tammy bears down on that area. So please, if you're still watching up to this point, join us tonight. We'll have a great conversation. Bring all the questions, comments, or concerns you have, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Once I am fully rid of this head cold and I'm done with these relentless headaches that it keeps inducing for me specifically, I know we use the word induce for the weather activity, but in this case, all this sinus pressure is just making my entire head wishy-washy. I wish I could spend some more time talking on this, guys, but I can promise you that later on this evening in our Tropics Talk, we're going to delve into the weeds together and look at everything in a grand perspective as well as getting into what you could be seeing in your neck of the woods. Until then, folks, I hope to see you later on, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please tune in, bring anything you got. I'll be there for you and support you every step of the way throughout that hour-plus-long segment. But until next time, guys, this is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.